Hello, I'm Dr. Virginia Kane, Director of the Marion County Public Health Department. The model policy your healthcare organization will be using and the training video you're about to watch are based on guidelines developed by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. As you will see, we've applied these recommendations for healthcare settings in our community. I encourage you to watch this video, perhaps a few times, and commit the idea of run, hide, fight to memory. I also encourage you to speak to your colleagues, administration, and management about what you learn and what policies and procedures are in place at your facility to help you survive an active shooter incident. This training will force you to imagine the unimaginable, but I hope you will imagine it and think of how you could respond if this happened on your floor, in your clinic, or on your shift. Your life may depend on it. Thank you. As healthcare professionals, it's hard for us to imagine facing an active shooter, taking lives in the very places where we work so hard to save them. Sadly, shootings can happen anywhere, including hospitals and healthcare facilities. While we all hope we will never have to face this kind of deadly situation, it's absolutely critical to understand what to do if an active shooter enters your facility. That is why the MESH Coalition, representatives from Marion County Hospitals, and advisors from law enforcement work together to research and propose a model policy for responding to an active shooter in a healthcare setting. This policy, approved by the boards of directors for both the MESH Coalition and the Indianapolis Coalition for Patient Safety, serves as a template so that Central Indiana hospitals and healthcare organizations can create their own facility-specific policies for responding to active shooter incidents. An active shooter incident can occur in your facility on any day at any time. Excuse me. Yeah. Where's 214 at? 214 is right down there. Thanks. Okay. Anything we need to know about? No. Pain. What? Oh my God! What? You have just seconds to react and three actions you can take to help make yourself safe. Run, hide, or fight. The perpetrators are varied. The venues that they select are varied. The victims that they select are varied. Their mindset is to create the most amount of havoc, death, and destruction in the shortest amount of time that they possibly can. With this type of training, it ensures that all of our hospital and healthcare providers understand how our emergency and first responders will be reacting to these situations. So that we will have similar response, people will have similar training, it will make it much easier, and as a result, could potentially save lives. In law enforcement, the common phrase is you will react as you have trained. So you're going to do something. The question is, are you going to do something that could potentially save your life? What was that? What was that? Staff, let's go. Let's go. This way. This way. Hurry, 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 hurry. If you can't evacuate the area, leave immediately. Don't bother to take anything with you. Encourage others to go with you. But if they don't follow, don't wait. Dad? No. Okay. On a scale of one to 10, with 10 being Stay here, stay quiet. If you're with a patient who cannot escape with you, discontinue care and leave. If you can, secure the patient room upon exiting. Do not stop to help the wounded. Exit the area immediately. So running preserves your ability to stay alive and preserves your ability to respond to the patients who may need your care after the incident. We may be abandoning that patient for a short time, 
But if we aren't there to respond to their medical needs after the shooting incident, we're of no help to them. So think of it as conserving your resources. When exiting, keep your hands raised and visible. If you encounter anyone else, warn them not to go into the area. Avoid pointing, screaming, or yelling while evacuating. If law enforcement is present, follow their orders. Law enforcement will go direct to threat, uh, past casualties, past uh, a lot of victims, be able to end the threat. And it makes a lot of sense because more death is going to follow unless that is done um, as a priority. Move a safe distance away from the facility. If law enforcement has not arrived, follow your facility's procedures for reporting the incident. This may be to call 911, call facility security, or press a panic button if the area is equipped with one. Make the report even if you think someone else already has. Do not attempt to re-enter the scene until law enforcement has given an all-clear announcement. Depending upon the situation and where you are, your best option may be to hide. The best hiding place is one that is out of the shooter's view, provides protection from gunfire, and doesn't trap you or restrict your movement. Block the door to prevent the shooter from entering and hide behind large objects like cabinets or desks. Remain silent. Look for places where you might be able to hide behind locked doors, maybe a medication room, maybe a supply room. We labeled on our floor the safe places to hide. We've instructed our nurses to barricade the doors, move the beds in front of the door, barricade it, and put the patient, and maybe even yourself with the patient, in the bathroom and lock the door, turn off the lights, mm -hmm. just try to act like no one's there. Follow your facility's procedures for reporting the incident, but only if making the call won't give away your position to the shooter. If anyone with you is injured, do what you can to attend to them while remaining hidden. But while you are hiding, you must also think through what you will do if the shooter finds you. Although it should be your last resort, prepare to fight the attacker. Incapacitating any kind of suspect and stopping him from doing what uh, he had been doing is your goal there. If your life is in imminent danger, prepare to fight. Your goal is to disrupt or incapacitate the shooter. Even yelling or throwing objects can help by confusing the shooter and making it harder to aim. Act as aggressively as possible. Your commitment to your actions will mean the difference between life and death. The more you have in numbers, the, the greater your chances are uh, to be successful in defeating uh, someone that's even armed. Think of run, hide, fight as more than just what to do when faced with an active shooter. It can be a way of thinking about your surroundings every day. Whether you are always in the same place or you change locations frequently, make it a point to know key features of your environment. Know where the exits are, including stairwells. Know what rooms can be secured and locked. Know how to lock down your area or unit if possible. Pay attention to where phones are. Find out if the facility has panic buttons and where they're located. Know your facility's procedures for reporting an incident so you know who to call and what to say before you ever have to pick up the phone. Be aware of people around you. Keep in mind that an active shooter won't fit any specific profile. He or she may look like any other visitor, patient, or coworker you might encounter on any given day. We don't want to be too worrisome about it, but we do need to be prepared as a community. We've been trained on what to do in code situations. So the more that we're trained on this and the more that we practice and have drills, the more hopefully your mind will just go into motion. 
rehearse in your head what you're going to do if this situation um, were to occur. Where you can hide, where you can exit, what can you use to fight with? Uh, those are not common thoughts, and they need to be. The best weapon you have is knowledge. And something as simple as gearing your mind to run away from the gunshots can save your life. And having the state of mind to take as many people with you when you go saves other lives. Make run, hide, fight your mindset every day and train yourself to make it your strategy for survival.